Hi and welcome back. Today's video is actually brought on by a question thanks to Softwarp. So we're going to be talking about debit card processing. So let's get started. So a debit card is similar to a credit card in the sense that it is a payment option that is a plastic card that has a magnetic strip and sometimes a chip. Now, like a credit card, it has a logo at the bottom for a credit card processor and sometimes the bank will also include the word debit somewhere on that card. This is different than an ATM card. Don't know what an ATM card is? Check out this video. So let's keep talking about a debit card. Like a credit card, you can also store your information for a debit card on other electronic payment apps. So thinking like Apple Pay, Google Pay, other type of wallets. You can also save this and store them in your PayPal account and other online processors. So how debit cards differ from credit cards aside in the name is in how these transactions are funded. With a debit card, they are funded directly from your checking account and if the credit card it is from a line of credit now for the most part you shouldn't be able to overspend with a debit card because it's tied to the amount of money that you actually have in your checking account but if you have a bank that allows you to have a line of credit then it will sometimes pull from there now that we got over the funding part and the differences in the actual plastic card let's talk about the steps and processing so in general it follows five steps step one is that someone decides that they want to pay for their purchase using a debit card and that could be either from swiping, tapping, entering their number, telling their numbers over the phone. Step two is that information is then transmitted through the POS or the point of sale system. And what this POS does is it then sends that information to the card's processor. Step three, then the processor then verifies this information and then sends the amount to be charged towards the bank. Step four, the bank confirms that the charge can be processed because there is enough funds in the account. So the bank will first put a hold for that amount and send an approval. Step five is that POS system will say that the transaction was approved and then either prompt you to remove the card or just tell you that it was accepted. So you're like, wow, that's complicated and sounds like a lot. And yeah, that's a kind of a lot of steps. However, thanks to the wonders of the internet and how quickly data can be processed, this happens in mere seconds, sometimes in milliseconds. After the bank's initial approval, sometimes later that day or the next business day, then that money will actually be moved from the account and sent to the merchant's account. So now it's not always so instantaneous. Sometimes there'll be like a day hold or two days hold, etc. Well, you'll see it on your bank statement or like when you log into your account, you'll see that there's a hold, but it didn't Pull the money yet and that can kind of differ based on the merchant so it might depend on when they finalize all their transactions for the day it could also be dependent on whether or not there was a tip charge to that same card too in which case it's actually an approval for two charges and so it could take a little bit longer than just say a one-time charge did you know that there's four different types of debit card processing. Debit transactions can be categorized in a number of different ways. One way is whether if it is considered an online transaction or if it's considered an offline transaction. So an online transaction has nothing to do with the internet, but actually has to do with the processor that it is being sent to. If it is being sent to the processors that are used in like ACH, a true debit transaction style, it's considered online. Offline is when you go and you use your debit card in a manner where it instead is processed first through a credit processor and then sent online. So let's talk about the four main types. The first main type is a pin debit transaction, which means that when you put your card in, it's gonna prompt you for your pin or your personal identification number. It's generally four digits that you input and then it will go through with the rest of the steps to confirm the accounts, how much, etc. So these are considered one of the more secure types and it's considered an online one because you are prompted to provide some sort of additional identification, which is a safety measure to confirm that the card user is in fact the person that the card was issued to. Now the network that this is processed through is through the debit one and that is because it goes straight 
towards the bank that issued it and there's a little bit less of a middleman kind of situation going on there. Also, because of the use of the pin, again, as an extra layer of protection or verification to ensure that it's not being used fraudulently because if you input the wrong pin, then your transaction will be denied and your transaction couldn't go further. Next is signature debit transaction. When a person chooses credit for their purchase, this will prompt that they sign for their transaction and this makes it a signature based one. Now this is considered an offline method because the network that it's going through is now the credit and not the debit one. These are considered a little bit riskier than the pin ones simply because there is no verification that the person is in fact the person that the card was issued to. Although there is a signature, it is possible for that signature to be forged, etc. And because of this, it has higher fees for the merchant. The next one is contactless debit transactions. So contactless debit transactions is a, another subtype of what's considered online transactions. Now contactless near field communication or NFC transactions are the ones that you take your phone and you tap it, you take your card, you tap it, you use your smartwatch, you tap it. It's when it's already pre-verified through an electronic payments processor. So like Apple Pay or Google Pay, they already go through a verification process to verify that the numbers that were added to the account are in fact for a person who is authorized to use that account. So with NFC transactions or contactless ones, your information is already being transmitted in a manner that includes the verification, therefore making it a little bit more secure and it's treated generally kind of like the pin debit transactions and it goes through a debit transaction line. And the last type is called card not present transactions and it actually encompasses a couple of things. So let's talk about it. Card not present transaction is a transaction where in general you type in your information so those keyed in ones, those where you call in and give your information. Also, when you are making payments online, you again, you have to type it in. And this is also generally the card on file, which is you hand write your information on a sheet and then you give authorization for it to be used. Then that too would be considered a card not present situation because you can get continuously charged, but they don't physically have the card at that moment. Now these transactions get treated like the signature debit transactions and therefore is also considered an offline method. Because of this, they are generally considered a little bit higher for fraud and for the merchant can be higher in fees. So what's the difference between the debit card network and a credit card network? Well, a debit card network goes through the same channels as an ACH payment, a direct deposit payment, things of the nature. So like wire transfers too, they all go through the same type of network and go directly to your individual bank's information. With a credit card network, it actually goes through a third party, in which case, which one it goes through is dependent on the logo that's on the card. If it's through Visa's network, if it's through Discover's network, etc., And by going through yet another party, there is additional fees attached to it for a merchant. So it's an extra step. So why does the type of network matter? It doesn't matter for you as a person who's swiping the card. It matters for the merchant because depending on whether if it's considered a debit one versus a credit one, there's different fees attached to it. Also, there's different risk depending on which one of the four categories it falls into. And so there may be additional fees attached to that. That. and it generally is like a slightly higher processing fee. Now, another thing to consider is that in some states, they do allow for a surcharge to be applied in which a merchant will try to recoup some of their costs by charging you extra money for using a credit card instead. They also may impose a minimum requirement, so you have to spend at least X amount of money before you're able to use a credit card. That is not the case with debit cards. So yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. Once again, thank you SoftWarp for even posing the question. If you you have any other questions that you would like answered please leave a comment below and as always i'll see you in the next one bye